What's happening, fam? LAR movement still moving. The book is entitled Lessons from a Non Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below, as usual. This video is entitled um, Addiction to Second Chances. Because in society, in plenty of different ways, you can see people get so many second chances, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to just use different scenarios. So, you got people who have substance abuse problems. And all the problems that go along with substance abuse. But you feel like you, they're talented or you want to see them win or you believe in them. So, you allow them to do whatever it is that they like to do or that you feel like they have a God-given ability to do or a talent to do. And you allow them to make mistake after mistake after mistake. So you enable them, whether it's because you believe in them or their talent gets you paid, whatever. So the problem with that is this. They get accustomed to having second chances. They get addicted to it because they know, look, man, if I mess up, somebody going to have my back. Somebody going to bail me out, Some, you know, because I can mess up as many times as I want to. See, the addiction isn't just the substance abuse. It's the, it's the second chances. And as an enabler, as an enabler you, you enable them because you're addicted to helping. Problem. There's somebody in that, in that that's always left out, and that's the person who either, who, not the person who blows the opportunity, not the person who enables them to keep getting opportunities, but the person who winds up earning that spot. You blew your opportunity, somebody comes in, they earn that spot. Now, what happens is you rob that person for their opportunity because you keep, you're addicted to giving this person a second chance. And the more they mess up, the more you rob either that person numerous times or, or, or numerous people of an opportunity that they feel like they've earned. So this is a problem. The same applies to when somebody is a jerk. You know, they're a jerk, but they're productive. They got a talent, right? But they don't conduct themselves properly. But you enable them by telling everybody, oh, that's just how they act. That's who they are. That's how they get down. Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the problem comes when they're, they're addicted to knowing that you're going to pick up the pieces for whatever mess that they create. See, they never have to... You know, these type of people don't never have to actually fix their own mistakes in the beginning. So what happens is they keep burning bridges. You keep mending them. And what you do is the person who, who, who fits the gap, you figure out a way to get rid of them, even though that they're just as productive with less of the issues. This is why I say people are addicted to second chances. So, you know, let's move on to a different type of thing. Um, you have people who are just flat out uh, uh, dysfunctional. But you see something in them. You know, you see something in them because of guilt, of they remind you of somebody else that you probably feel like didn't get an opportunity. So now, because you see something or someone in someone else, and, and they're dysfunctional, they're knuckleheads, you're willing to put up with it because of your own inner guilt of letting people get, a, of not helping a person you should have helped. So what do you do? You, you turn right around and you rob another person of an opportunity, even though they have they may have the same amount of talent. Because a person, because you're helping a knucklehead who reminds you of somebody that you robbed of an opportunity. Continues the cycle. You know, just continues the cycle. Um, and you see this with, you know, people in America. Um, 
we have this issue with relationships where people, you know, you can, some per, some person's serial cheater. And you're an enabler because you stand in a relationship even though you feel like you're getting done wrong. But when it comes to um, meeting new people, you're figuring out ways, when, when new people present themselves an opportunity for you to get with somebody who quote unquote treats you like you feel like you should be treated by the person who's doing you wrong, you figure out ways to X those people out. So you rob yourself and them of that opportunity, right? And you wind up back with the person who's a serial cheater treating you wrong, right? Now, fast forward a little bit. You have the same issue with crime in America, where, you know, it's funny because there's a certain group of people who are notorious for just doing crime, but guess what? They're enabled. So we're gonna swipe, we're gonna expunge that. We're gonna wipe that one under the record. We're gonna we that should be a felony. We're gonna turn it to a misdemeanor because we get enable, enable, enable. But then you turn right around and you charge people for the very same things to the fullest extent of the law. While in while knowing you let person off the hook with multiple offenses. Okay? The other thing, you know, we talk about like affirmative action, right? I use affirmative action as as an as one of those tactics also because what's going to happen is uh what we don't talk about is this. For some people, affirmative action is a way to be addicted uh, to second chances because, okay, I'm this I'm in this group. So if I don't cut it in this group, okay, I'm a minority. I get a second chance. Oh, I don't cut it as a minority. I'm this type of minority. Okay, I'm 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 a double minority. Okay. And you're enabled to get opportunity after opportunity after opportunity of affirmative action. And at the same time, you're taking people who affirmative action is probably meant for, and you're robbing them of their opportunity. And I'm talking about people in the bubble of affirmative action, not people outside. Because I can say the same thing with people outside. You know, people outside of that bubble... uh, they get numerous opportunities and, and, and blame affirmative action. You know, you, you're enabled. You know, you, you, they say you have better schools. Okay. So you got an advantage. You don't get your, your, your grades, your school say is more academically competitive. So you say. But you get to take, you get a lot of help in school. You get a lot of help on tests. You get a lot of extra time. You get a lot of, the teachers enable you to be the best you can be because they coddle you to make sure that you can get ahead. But because of that, but you rob people because you get so many opportunities to get ahead academically, it robs other people of their opportunities because we're not talking an apples to apples situation. That's the problem, right? You, you, you're addicted to... Um, the second chances because you can always mess up and get a retest. You can always mess up and get a retake. You can always mess up and, and, and come back and do it over and then get a better grade and it boosts up your GPA. You can always do that. Um, we have this thing in society where, you know, and I, you know what? I'm going to stop it on this part of it and, and get to the meat of this problem. The problem is this. When people get addicted to these second chances, you hit a wall where, you know, the people that you robbed of their chances because you've got so many, whether you're you're, you're the enabler or, or the person that's being enabled, you get to a point where people are, no, I'm not dealing with it no more. You've had enough chances. And you see people have mental breakdowns or they lash out in anger because the train has come to an end. The gravy train stopped. Where you have a history of effing up, but now 
people are not gonna 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 take your f ups. Now you held to a standard that the people that 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 had their opportunities robbed from them because you kept getting because you were getting opportunities because you were addicted to um, to second chances and enablers were addicted to giving you second chances. Now you held by that one and done standard, you lose your mind. You know, all of a sudden it ain't right. It's unfair. You know, I can't handle this. You know, you ready to kill somebody. You ready to, you, 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 need, you need medication. You need to be put into a, into a mental institution because you just can't handle society because you've been coddled because you've, you've got so many second chances. You don't live in the real world. You don't live in a world where, where the people who didn't get second chances live until, you know, you've run out of um, places to go and, ch and chances to get. Because the thing about it is, when I say you're addicted to second chances, look, I'm got to say this part too. See, there are people out in the world who've turned it around and made good because they got second chances. And they want to tell everybody in the world, you know, I made it. And, and if I could do it, anybody could do it. But here's the problem. You're a fuck up. See, you are a fuck up who people allowed to continue to be a fuck up and you, you, were, able, you were able to be successful. There are people who aren't fuck ups like you. Who didn't get the opportunities that you did because people who believed in you so much they robbed other people. So they don't want to hear your underdog success story because there's a difference between an underdog and a fuck up and people try to mesh the two see underdogs are the people who actually got robbed of their opportunities these successful people who were fuck ups were people who got enabled into success because people believed in them so much so because people believed in you so much they were willing to put themselves and their livelihoods and their reputations on the line for you now you are you're standing on a pedestal of righteousness that you don't belong on. And what happens is you meet people who like, look, man, y'all could have been here, but you, people like you, got in the way. And people are like, well, you know, just how like you hear people say, oh, by the grace of God, like that, that angers some people because it's like, oh, so me, you mean to tell me it was God's grace that let you screw all of this shit up in your life? And it's because it's of God that you was able to get all these chances. And because of all the chances you got, I got screwed out of a lot of chances. All because of God. Because you're just God's chosen one. That's what you're saying? Okay. Well, you know, me, you, and God going to have a discussion. Because you can take all your beliefs and shove them. And then, you know, that becomes a problem. Um... I think people don't want to take that into consideration at times because at the end of the day, uh, how can I say this properly? At the end of the day, what winds up happening is people who aren't accustomed to getting second chances see people in powerful positions who've gotten second chances or they're in the same rooms with those people in, in, in a different powerful position who's got second chances, or they're staring at people who've gotten too many chances and they're like, you know what, I'm about to show you, I'm about to give you the harsh realities of life. Because there are people who don't care about being harsh with people because they, the, the, all they've had was harshness. All they had was zero tolerance. All they had was you out one shot and you, you, you out. They didn't have anybody, they didn't, they didn't have the opportunity to make mistakes. They didn't have the opportunities to be a screw-up. They didn't have the opportunity to, to have somebody to believe in them. They had the complete opposite. So while some of us are addicted to second chances, you got to remember that costs other people, and those people eventually want their restitution. So we out, yo. Peace.